Goblin Horde, how are you doing? You can see the Wicked ZH2 behind me if it ever goes in focus. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a golf course today shooting the intro and doubles up as a public field. It's quite a nice place to shoot, especially when it's nice and quiet like it is now. But yeah, lovely evening, lovely evening. It's a nice and warm, autumn's coming. So yeah, trying to make the most of, of the days that I have left of the riding season. But the Kawasaki ZH2 behind me and a lot of modern motorcycles these days have like a little eco sign that pops up whenever you are supposedly riding sensibly. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the ZH2 isn't exactly the most eco-friendly motorcycle in the world. But I suppose the question that must be asked is, should they be? Let's jump on and let's see if we can figure out this dilemma. Let's go. Someone's shouting from the top of the hill. Probably at their dog, no doubt. <laughs> they're shouting, but I don't know where they're shouting from. Oh, they're over there. <laughs> you alright? <laughs> they're playing golf or something. I bet they are, aren't they? <laughs> there they are. Yeah. Golf all's good. <laughs> it's nice of them to let me know because yeah like I said in the intro this is a public field at the same time as a as a golf course so yeah I suppose it can be a bit annoying with people like me just parking up here <laughs> but, yeah, I'm about to leave anyway so it's convenient but yeah I can't really hear them through my helmet so all right okie dokie so best of both world guy uh, b both world both worlds is of course that motorcycles be eco-friendly and fun but that's the problem isn't it that a lot of the time whenever you think about eco-friendly things they're not exactly i don't know the most exciting things in the world are they you know whenever you think about cars and all that motorcycles any anything that is supposed to bring enjoyment and satisfaction to a person as part of the hobby um, doesn't always work out, does it, when when they're eco-friendly, <laughs> supposedly eco-friendly. And I mean, I suppose there is a balance. This NH2 is certainly not where that balance point is. But I mean, the reason why I kind of I'm asking this question today is if motorcycles are supposed to be fun and exciting and all that stuff. Why should they be eco-friendly, you know? I mean, the obvious answer to that is uh, that they're <laughs> pollutants and all that. All that good stuff, you know? And I get that, I understand that. So there is a reason to make motorcycles eco-friendly and all that, but not at the expense of the enjoyment. And uh, I think that's where I think this, this this is where the argument is, isn't it? I think a lot of people agree that, you know, we need to help the planet and all that stuff, you know, all that, all that stuff that the Greens absolutely love. But at the same time as well, it shouldn't be at the expense of people's investments. And let's be honest here, a motorcycle is an investment in mental health. It's an investment in your enjoyment. It's an investment in the hobby. And I think, Sometimes, you know, these uh, eco decisions are, are made kind of like without consultation in, in, in some ways, you know. Anyway, it, it does affect the whole community and that's, that's, that's the, uh, the issue here, you know. But it's quite funny because, I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and just change my... Uh, I need to I need to stop here for a second actually it won't, it won't let me do it whilst I'm moving but on this view that I've got here at the moment on the dashboard it doesn't actually show me the eco sign <laughs> it's quite funny I haven't I haven't turned it off deliberately this is just like the skin I suppose of this of this one in particular I haven't stopped in the best place in the world but whatever there we go oh display there we go Okay, so 
So on this mode here, it will give me the little eco sign. But you'll see that it doesn't stay on for all that much <laughs> on the ZH2. There it is, right there. But then look, I mean, a second ago, I put it back a little bit. Oh, there you go, it's gone. <laughs> but the funny thing is that even if I maintain speed on this bike, most of the time, I don't get that eco sign coming out. I don't know, it was on there for a little bit. Fifth gear, I'm accelerating. Okay, so if you accelerate basically past 5% throttle, then <laughs> that eco sign is gonna go away. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't wanna be sitting on the fence on this one because it's easy. Sitting on the fence is easy. Like, oh, yeah, there's reasons why and there's reasons that they shouldn't, you know? I'm going to stick to my guns here and I'm going to say they should not be eco-friendly. There, I said it. Because <laughs> that's what I mean. The biggest issue with trying to make things eco-friendly is that, especially in applications like this, on this size motorcycle, is it doesn't make a lot of sense. You are restricting what the machine is capable of doing. I mean, let's take the Hayabusa as a perfect example of this. The third generation Hayabusa has got a third of the power that the second generation Hayabusa had. And it's all because of Euro 5 emissions and all that stuff. So they have to comply with those regulations. They have to, they haven't got a choice. It's, it's, it's the law. And it kind of sucks because a motorcycle, a legendary motorcycle like the Hayabusa is being affected so badly that they've had to nerf it and nerf it a lot it still has a, a load of torque and all that which is great but it doesn't have that the top end horsepower that the previous generation did i mean look at kawasaki with the zr 1400 in europe they don't sell it anymore because they, they simply do not want to change the formula or, or maybe they don't have the r d budget to change the formula but still the the point still stands the it's, it is ruining certain motorcycles. That's a real pain, man. It's a real pain. Motorcycles are fun. They're exciting. They are... Oh, God, what, what's, what's the word, man? There, there are no words. That's the thing, guys. It, the experience of a motorcycle is like... Oh, it's just one, it's a very unique experience, and especially when you are on a on a big motorcycle like the ZH2 or even a midway bike, you know? They give you one of those experiences that is so unique and so just amazing. It's just an amazing hobby to be a part of. But when they try making things eco-friendly or eco-friendlier, it doesn't work. The formula simply does not work. I mean, I don't know what new regulations are gonna be appearing in the near future, but it probably isn't gonna be good motorcycles like these the one liters which seems to be taking over the 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 super heavyweight bikes now because they have to because it's the only engine designs that they can they can make that still fit within the euro 5 standards which sucks absolutely sucks but these manufacturers are turning to 1000s now more just because they're i suppose it's easier to yeah, to, to, to make the adjustments needed to fit in with Euro 5. But it sucks, guys. It really, really sucks. And, I mean, imagine if in five years' time, and it is not difficult to imagine, that the emissions regulations are even stricter than they are now. What's going to happen to these bikes? These bikes are going to get nerfed. And it's like, at that point, it might as well all be riding around on 125s. See, this is, this is where the issue is for me is that as much as everyone wants to be eco-friendly and as much as everyone wants to be, you know, good to the planet and all that stuff, it doesn't work with these applications. It simply doesn't. It's like hypercars. Hypercars are exactly the same. They're having to get nerfed because, because of emissions regulations. It's ridiculous. I mean, let's take a perfect example of a car is the Ford Mustang. The Ford Mustang in Europe is a five liter V8 and it produces 200 horsepower. What the actual? <laughs> We're a five liter V8. I bet the same car in the United States produces double, maybe triple that horsepower. It wouldn't surprise me if that car in the United States produces 600 horsepower or more. But that is what's happening. It's ridiculous. 
And again, it doesn't work for these applications. Companies are relying on these monster cars for sales, you know? They're like, they're poster, poster boys, effectively. You know, they're poster cars, they're poster bikes. And governments are telling them that they can't sell them anymore because they're, they're not eco-friendly enough. It's ridiculous. It doesn't work. It does not work. What's the alternatives? Guess what? There are no alternatives. You cannot make this work. That's the biggest issue here. And look, I don't think they should be eco-friendly. They don't need to be eco-friendly. I mean, how much of an impact, really, do motorcycles have on the environment? Arguably not much. I mean, was there, was there studies that I read about a few years ago that motorcycles produce certain, certain harmful emissions? more so than cars. I'm not sure, I, I, I could be talking on my ass there, but... But still, I mean, the, the, the um, emissions that cars produce, you know, like the CO2s and all that stuff, um, on a motorcycle is a lot less, apparently. It's, it's a lot less, but that was, like, I don't know, that was, that was a few years ago since, since I'd been reading up about it, so I'm not sure what the situation is nowadays, but you know the trajectory, you know where this is gonna go. It's not gonna change. Motorcycles are going to get more nerfed. Manufacturers are going to have to either scrap certain production SKUs or they're going to have to totally redesign them to try and make them work. But it isn't. It's, it's becoming an impossible task. And I suppose that's why all these manufacturers are changing to electric or changing to, to I don't know, whatever, hydrogen, whatever, hydrogen fuel cell doesn't matter they're having to find new ways of, of bundling the same experiences that people are having right now into totally different kind of bike and that's another argument entirely you know we I don't know if electrics have or have the same feel the same impact as an ICE I, I really don't think they will so it's again it's just one of those things where it's gonna kill an industry. I know that there are a lot of viewers that once everything goes electric, you're not gonna bother riding anymore. And uh, as, as sad as that is, that's the reality. A lot of people are simply not gonna to turn to electric because they're not the same. They don't produce the same noises, they don't produce the same experience. You know, when you're riding a motorcycle, or driving a car for that matter, when you have an engine, something that moves, something's mechanical. It feels like a heart beating. It feels like it's alive. You know, that's a sensation that you simply cannot get from an electric car or electric motorcycle. It just, it just doesn't happen. You will not be able to get that experience in electric, simple as that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I want these motorcycles to stay, guys, as much as I possibly can. So I'm, I am, of course, gonna advocate for keeping them the way they are. But, I mean, there is, there is an argument to be made here for eco-friendly bikes around city centers and stuff like that, scooters, small displacement bikes. I totally get it. Like, that's a very, very useful application for a motorcycle because it's more of a workhorse than something that you necessarily enjoy, you know? So, from, for that application, it works really well. You know, 50cc, 125cc scooters, motorcycles, things that you can, you know, dot around towns and cities and stuff makes a ton of sense an absolute ton of sense especially when you know we got smog and all that other stuff for you to think about uh it, yeah it really works again in that in that particular application it works but bikes like the zh2 bikes like a fireblade bikes like r1s r6s well, R6s, there you go, they've been affected by this as well. The R7 is taking over the R6 in Europe because the R6 cannot, can't, can't be sold anymore in Europe. Well, in fact, actually, that's the same with every 600cc sport bike now. None of them are being sold in Europe anymore. And it's for that reason. It's they, they cannot, they, they simply cannot make them for Euro 5 markets. They, they, they can't do it, or at least, they haven't invested in them anyway to try and make it work but that's the thing there'd be no point it'd be diminishing returns like i was saying earlier you know you have to nerf it 
to make it work you have to nerf it and it's like well why would you buy an upgrade that's actually a downgrade <laughs> you know whenever you're buying the next best thing you expect it to be better more powerful and all that stuff faster when they're not that's that's the biggest issue that i've got with all these modern eco standards and stuff like that you know and how many more cars are on the road than motorcycles it's, it's a lot but you know like what less than 10 percent of road users are motorcyclists maybe even less than five percent road users are motorcyclists but this market seems to be more affected than cars maybe maybe not May, maybe maybe not i mean I, I did make that example of the ford mustang and i think that same issue applies to a lot of different cars as well manufacturers have had to scrap certain skews of cars because they well, well well they've had to completely nerf them in order to make them work you know it's things like that i suppose but you know when you have a five liter v8 that produces less horsepower than my car does which is a 250 horsepower inline four something's wrong there right something is desperately wrong there <laughs> And that's the thing, I know that greenies and all that stuff are, are going to totally disagree with what I'm saying. I, I get it. I get it. I, I do. I totally get it. And you never know. I've said this before that whenever I get the chance to have a go on electric, I hope it's going to blow my mind. I hope it's going to make me think, wow, I need electric in my life. I really do. At this point, I'm not, I'm not convinced. I don't, I'm not sure. But I'm open to the possibility of electrics being the way of the future as much as i hate to say it but if i mean this this is a message that i've been saying quite a lot in, in quite a lot of videos i've been saying it for a while now you know this is the opportunity guys this is the opportunity right now in the next couple of years is the opportunity to get into motorcycles whilst you can whilst you can ride these types of bikes now is the time to do it in the next few years it's gonna it's gonna get harder and harder to start riding bikes like these at some point motorcycle tests are all going to be exclusively done on electric motorcycles and that's in a very near future in the next five to ten years that's the future that we're looking at right now at least with um the way how things stand currently anyway with um the way how governments are setting targets and stuff like that for net zero and what have you it's it's inevitable it's happening so now's the time to get involved in the hobby if you're humming and ahhing about it now's the time to do it guys i mean totally serious with you there now now is the time but anyway guys and gals i'm gonna leave the video here thank you ever so much for watching i hope that this has been an interesting video for you something a little bit different something that's supposed to spark a little bit of debate i'm hoping that that does in the comments so definitely make sure go ahead and leave your thoughts down in the comments below because uh, there is no answer to this one guys there is no answer where where motorcyclists will be happy that's the problem there, there is no answer we can debate it all day long but i don't think there's going to be any sort of compromise where a motorcyclist is going to be happy because like i said every motorcycle year on year from now on is going to be a downgrade from what they had before so it's gonna be great for the used market but <laughs> I suppose that's it. God, I hate that man. The way how they they just change lights so quickly. Oh, so annoying. There's a bloody uh, red camera, that uh, red light camera, behind us on this one. Sucks. <laughs> So yeah guys and gals make sure to leave a like make sure to leave a comment hit subscribe we are really close to hitting 3,000 subscribers so i'd really appreciate it if you could give me that one extra click please oh it'd be such a milestone get to 3k subscribers would be so epic it'd be so cool and thank you uh, for everyone who, who is currently subscribed and all of you new subscribers thank you massive thank you to you lot you're absolutely awesome and uh you know i mean that's the thing i with these kinds of moto vlogs, I, I want them to inspire, I want them to spark debate, you know. All the things that I say in these videos aren't necessarily my opinion, but 
it's, a, it's something to you know, it's questions you know asking questions I mean I know I've kind of made made my point clear here about <laughs> about ICE motorcycles but at the, you know I try to play devil's advocate as much as I possibly can so I hope you guys can appreciate that but yeah definitely let me know in the comments what you think about this topic because it is going to affect all of us all of us motorcyclists we're going to be affected by what's going to be happening in the next few years when it comes to eco whatevers so yeah definitely let us know your thoughts down in the comments below it if we want things to stay the way they are or at least have a chance of staying the way they are then we need to let our voices heard we need to let our voices be heard guys that's what i'm trying to say yeah make our voices heard <laughs> yeah thanks again for watching guys and girls hope you're all doing well we'll catch you all in the next video have a good one